Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's suggestion comes from Tristan. The band we're checking out is Imperial Circus Dead Decadence, and the title of the track is Featuring Aramari. So let's uh let's dive into this. See what's going on in this track. And uh I guess let's uh let's hit it. Yeah, this is just non-stop, relentless. I was gonna say, let's uh, bring the strings back. There is just so much going on. on space rising uh, ideas in the guitar. Guitars, they both have a, their own harmony going on their riff. Two vocals, the strings are happening.
really thought we were going to take it down a notch with that melody that the guitar and vocals were doing. Piano counterpoint against the guitar solo. Just pure shred. Beautiful layering here. The chord progression is gorgeous too. A little bit of darkness in there in that classical fashion. a tight fill. That drummer was right in the pocket. Very Baroque ending there with, uh, first of all, just the chords utilized, but also, the way that they did the layering, having the strings play the accented beats of what the guitars were doing, but the guitars were playing like 16th notes with a lot of pedal notes in between the accented hits. So you get these really big moments, but you still get the sound in between the, the accents. Um, just, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. That That is... That is a lot of music in eight minutes. And see, the thing is, too, uh, this is uh, doesn't really have much to do with the, the song itself, but if we took some of those ideas and we slowed it down so we weren't in thrash metal speeds, um, we could probably make some really good traditional classical music out of this. Um, but they chose to play it at like 150, 160 beats per minute with 16th notes all over the place and just rush through all the beauty. And like, I can hear some of it. There's some sections like there at the end that are just plainly Baroque influenced. And we had a couple sections in the middle of the track. I was like, oh, you know, there's some Renaissance stuff. Uh, there's just a ton of traditional classical uh, inspirations all over this track mixed with of course that technical metal side as well um, and it's just it's done it such a flurry this this song it's just and so here's my other question is who is Automati? Is that one of the male vocalists? Is that the female vocalist? Is it somebody else? Is this a composer who makes 
uh, sym symphonic elements, right? Maybe all of the rock elements and the vocalists are the band, and Naramati is a classical composer who made the surrounding stuff for this. Um, and it's not like this is the first time I've heard them. But I don't remember. This song's going to leave an impression on me. I I would wager. I don't know how I can walk away from this and not associate ICDD with speed and heavy symphony writing and 5,000 vocal layers. I mean, I suppose it's, I mean, maybe the other stuff I've heard from them is just like this, and I don't remember that for some reason. It could also have been a very long time ago, and I'm pretty sure it was a live stream, and I tend to remember those less as I give them less thought. Not, uh, not intentionally, it's just we got to fit nine songs in a two-hour stream, whereas here I can take as long as I need to to think about it and process it and talk about it. Um... But I don't think we've had ICDD on the channel before. I gotta check real quick. Um, yeah, we have. Oh man, I don't know how old this is though. The thumbnail's backwards. April 2021. Three, two years ago. We had a song called Uta. Maybe they haven't been on a live stream then. Regardless, I don't think I'm forgetting this. This was just... This was an onslaught. Alright, so this is totally going to be surface level stuff here. Um, because at any given moment, there were 9 or 10 things going on. Going at a million miles an hour. Um, and as soon as I could try to figure out what one of those, I used two fingers, what one of those lines out of the nine we're doing, we've moved on to something else. It is just a bonkers amount of information to process at a ridiculous speed. So, on the surface, we have some, some sort of faster metal. Thrash, possibly, um, maybe a technical metal. Now, like a tech death, is technical metal a thing? Like, do we have to have another signifier? Like, can we just have, instead of technical death metal, can we just have technical metal? Is that a genre? Um, but, yeah, I mean, 16th notes all the way across the board, whether it's in the drums or guitars, um, fast tempos, it's very technical, very precise, and musically we're not working within uh, the usual pentatonic ideas that metal likes to deal with. Uh, we are bringing in a lot of traditional classical in here. Both of the biggest eras, Baroque and Renaissance, show up in aspects throughout this track. Um, this is our foundation, though, is this metal. And it brings in all the things that, that you would expect here. We have two or three different types of harsh vocals. We have compressed cleans. Um, and then we do have a clean, a, a, a male clean that's kind of reserved for specific situations that we heard more of near the end of the track as we entered into less aggressive atmospheres. We really weren't lightening up, light lightening up on the rhythmic aggression. It was still a driving pace, but emotionally, chordally, harmonically, it it lightens up a little bit, and in those sections we bring in some uh, some clean vocals. That's not to say that it's the only place they, they crop up, but we did hear more and more of them as the song mellowed out a little bit in that regard. Um, the other third of this track is the strings and piano. And these come up in all sorts of different situations, to emphasize all sorts of different emotions and composition styles and techniques. At the very beginning, we have a very bombastic film score-like vibe, um, really going for these large staccato accented notes. 
these nice orchestral stingers just with a solo string section. Um, and they are done to accent what the band is doing and to give it a much fuller sound. I believe there was an a violin, sorry, above all this also doing its own thing. I just, there's so many things to remember. <laughs> and this really set the tone for everything that the music was going to present. We had the metal, we had the orchestra, we had counterpoint, we had unison of ideas, and we had the blistering intensity. You can listen to the first 30 seconds of the song and know if you're going to enjoy it or not. Um, and this pretty much fills out like 60% of the song is going to be this underlying metal idea with blistering, uh, drum and, and guitar concepts. I couldn't hear a bass at all, but it's such a dense track and bass is usually fairly difficult to hear in metal to begin with so i'm not surprised really the cello came out in a few sections um, and kind of took the place of that low end string element it was on the outside making it a lot easier to hear than the bass which probably was center channel was you know in the in, in the mix of it all uh really difficult to hear hear what that was doing and again could be my ears to uh bass register stuff just I don't know, man. I, I can't hear it that well. Um, it, it uh, I don't know. Anyways. Like I said, this is pretty much what takes us through most of this. We have some brighter, um, I guess, I mean, because they like power metal style guitar riffs that kind of deal with uh brighter more powerful maybe poppier riffs we can even call it it's just more energetic kind of like a really fast pop punk if that makes I'm, I'm trying to figure out a nice analogy for where brighter riffs would come from because it is contrasted with heavier grittier riffs that we do have in some places that are usually accompanied with growls where the brighter riffs are accompanied with cleans and again, that is not a rule. That's just something that typically happens. They do cross over all over the case here because this band decides that everything fits with everything and that nothing is off limits within their small realm of ideas. And you know it works for them. I can't, I can't say that any of this was disappointing. Um, but this this idea of the rock core with the orchestral, or sorry, the string section embellishment um, and I say embellishment, but honestly, they carry the same weight. It's like 50, 50. Um, but this isn't the only method of writing. We also have some chiller sections. We had that female vocalist and piano and violin moment kind of brought it down a bit. Again, not really tempo wise. It's still a driving pace. We just kind of reduce the number of instruments and reduce the number of aggressive timbres. Um, and we had a couple of sections where the guitars shifted to more of a brighter chordal movement and the strings got to take over as a primary instrument rather than sitting around the, the rock bands. But, I mean, that's, that's really, they have two modes. They have driving rock or driving ballad. <laughs> Which is like, it should be an oxymoron, but it absolutely happened here. It feels calmer and smoother, or calmer and soothinger. That's not a word. Soothier? So soother. It's more soothing. But the tempo hasn't really dropped at all. It's still a driving, driving idea. We just get rid of the 16th notes and we replace them with primarily quarters and, and half notes and a couple of eighth notes to help give some diversity to the rhythmic flow. Um... And so the end result is a song with plenty of peaks and valleys to take us on a really fun roller coaster where you never quite know what's around the corner, but you know a general idea of what it's going to be. Uh, you know, if you have a deck of cards that only goes one to three, you got a pretty good guess of what's around the, you know, what the next card's going to be in the draw. Um, and even if you're wrong, you kind of still know what the others could be. And that's what this feels like. 
it's either going to be that driving ballad, the driving rock, uh, pop punk kind of stuff, or the driving metal. Um, but regardless of where they take you, you can just always be ready for that intensity, that momentum, um, and the really dense writing. No matter what their their intensity level is as far as ballad, pop punk, and metal, um, you're going to be ready for the speed, you're going to be ready for the drive, the momentum, and uh, again, the density, because there's so many things happening, which I think we might as well just talk about now. There was one part in the end of the song, I mentioned that the two guitars had their own thing going on. They were harmonizing with each other, so we have harmony going on there. Uh, there is the string section, which half of which we're doing these uh, stingers, this ornamental stuff, all in harmony again. More stacks of notes that need to get balanced out in the moment to moment to make sure you don't have too much dissonance. And a violin, I think, sitting above it all doing its own counterpoint against what the guitars were doing because they weren't just doing chords. They had a riff. They were doing their own melody line. And then we had like three vocalists on top all doing their own things. Two of them might have been harmonized on the same line. But there was at least two vocal ideas going on at one time. And just so many layers of counterpoint, some of them paired up with harmony within the counterpoint. And then your drums are just going off underneath all of it. And then out of nowhere, some dude will scream, and it's not really a another melody line to worry about, but it is another layer of texture and rhythm that counters everything else that's going on. And it is just a flurry of ideas all stacked upon each other. And that's... That's what this song is. It's that depth. It's that it it's like okay, so this is interesting. Post rock wall of sound, right? When you feel like the sound sphere is just filled up and it's just all this sound come together to to make this brick wall, right? And it just it just hits you, right? And you just gotta deal with the emotional element of it. This is a wall of sound. But none of the instruments come together to make one one element. Everything is still unique. There's just so much going on. It feels like the sound sphere is going to burst. Um, it's really interesting to craft that wall of sound feeling. Where it really feels like there's no more space for anything else in the track. In a completely different manner. Rather than pulling everything together. You keep that separation and you allow it to... Uh, to just bloom and build off of each other and you're just being hit with all this sound of, and i called it an onslaught at the end of the reaction and i still stand by that i don't think i would use that term if not for the tempo it would still be a lot to take in it would still be some sort of sonic assault but it would not be an onslaught that is purely because of the speed that they deliver everything and change ideas on And see, for me, this is just, this is good. Because I like contrast. I like vocal layering. I like multiple vocalists. I like classical components in the composition. I don't necessarily need the instruments. I like it in the composition. I don't care what instrument's playing it. Um, I like the contrast between harshes and cleans, that dynamic element there and honestly i think dynamics is their weakest element um, at least as far as volume goes and maybe even width everything is at 10 out of 10 uh, 11 out of 10 if you want to turn that knob up a little further than it's supposed to go they don't uh, they don't ever pull things back at least not on this song and that's fine for what it is but i as much as i loved a lot of this it is still a lot of a lot and it is exhausting i would love to check out more i don't know if i could listen to a whole album in one go that's the thing right there is it's, it's a lot in a small amount of time um there's got to be something else that i can think of to talk about um i think that about covers it they do what they do very well, which is dense, 
fast playing without compromising the sonic integrity of the layers. It is a rush. All right, I'm uh, gonna hit the lyrics and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, we're gonna start from the beginning of this story. I just went down a rabbit hole. I don't even remember the song too much. That's how long ago it's been. Uh, so I started out and I found the lyrics in Japanese. I figured that wasn't too bad of a deal, so I popped it into Deep L. And Deep L didn't translate it. Said that there's a possibility that uh, one of the languages used in it wasn't something they supported yet. Japanese was in their drop down. Whatever. I'll move on. Okay, I'll, I'll get less of a direct translation from Google. So I pop it into Google Translate and it just spits out the, the Japanese in the English container. And this confused me. So I went and looked and looked and looked to see if there was a translated set of lyrics for this track. And I couldn't find one. And then I realized that Google Translate will translate at a specific character limit. I don't know why. I can't pop the whole thing in there and there are a lot of lyrics here. So I spent about 10 to 15 minutes copying pasting about two lines at a time. And then I got the lyrics and I started to read through them. And they don't make any sense to me. There's a lot of quotes in here. I tried search for them. Nothing. Couldn't find any, any quote that these were made based off of. I probably should have searched for the Japanese. Although we didn't have kanji. We had the... Uh, the, we had the words in the, is it Roman language? Is that what it is? I don't know. Latin? Alphabet? Anyways. I, I don't know. And then I noticed that there's a lot of uh, specific names in here. Kanata, Konata, uh, Takashi Sake. Katsubo Yodamu Sengen, Naburi. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe some of this is going to lead me to something. Maybe a, a myth, right? And maybe they're, they made a song about some folklore. I'm like, I, you know, I can get behind that. We've had some really cool tracks on here that are specifically related to local folklore and stuff. No. One of the texts hit my safe search and said, would you like to disable safe search to look this up? And I said, uh, no, I don't think whatever I find there would be pertinent to what I'm looking for. <laughs> um, but I did find one. At the very end of this track is a quote, as long as I slaughter Kanata's life and save Kanata's life, this girl and I are connected to each other. And I'm like, this seems like a, a plot beat right here. So I looked up these two characters, Kanata and Kanata. And I came across an anime called Lucky Star. And I looked up the descriptions of these characters and they don't seem to do anything <laughs> with this. So I'm just at a big loss for words. There is a lot of ideas in here that are either Google poorly translated and I got really strange sentences out of. Or maybe the song is supposed to be completely disparate in which nothing's really supposed to line up together and it's supposed to be this flurry of separate ideas, which kind of makes sense with the way that the vocals were delivered and just the whirlwind element of the song. It was really dizzying and difficult to get a grasp on any moment and the lyrics being just as segmented uh, could 
I mean, that, that would work. But I... There is only one theme that I can see that runs through here, and it is uh, some sort of element of depression, grief, loneliness, uh, a darkened person with a great deal of pain, uh, shadows of the broken world, drowning in a fog. Like There's a lot of phrases of negative emotion. But I can't say that there's enough of it to draw a line with the elements that don't speak on that. It's probably about 30% of this pain, brokenness, depression, darkness, loneliness element. And 70%... I, I don't even know. Bringing up random names and talking about them the song begins with a quotation this is the fruit of the rice balls and ingredients spun at the end of the eternal eternity and like that's just kind of the, the asinine stuff i'm going on right here <laughs> like i can kind of get where it's coming from but i really think it's it's something got lost in translation on this and like i said i did it two lines at a time and it's possible that some elements of line three would have influenced a definition or translation in line two. Um, so, I, I mean, that could also lean into some of the odd sentences in here. Um, so I'm just going to have to say that I have no read on the lyrics, uh, no way to tie it into the music. But uh, at best, I think it would elevate it at worst. I mean, there have been times the lyrics have kind of brought down a work of art for me, but musically, this is just solid. So even not knowing what the lyrics are about, I'm still really, I still really enjoyed what was going on in this. What a track. What a journey. I've been making this for so long, but this video has been paused for such a long time as I went through that lyric journey. Uh, those are my thoughts on uh, this track. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. That's a lot of syllables. Uh, by Imperial Circus Dead Decadence. Let me know what you thought of this track. Anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? And if you have anything that you... any answers to the questions I had such as who was featured in this there's so many voices and elements that could be a featured aspect of it and without knowing what the original band is I uh I, I really can't figure that one out on my own it's, it, and the thing is they were all featured prominently all three vocalists and the strings I think all had their own same amount of time on all of them. In fact, my best guess is the guitar solo. I think it featured a guitarist, <laughs> which seems a bit odd. There's very few songs that feature guitarists. You usually feature a vocalist. But it's the only part of the song that I think where something stood out as a featured bit. Everything else felt very weighted similarly. Um, if you have insight into the lyrics, let me know. Uh, just... Man, this was a lot. Above the comments is a description box. In there, you'll find a link for a link tree. You can find so much in there. Uh, ways to support the channel, my music, Discord server, a ton more. You can find my email if you need to you know, reach me that way. It's just a lot of stuff, man. Go ahead and check it out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. That wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll continue on with this week's theme of one person projects and check out another special selection. Interesting. We're going to check out theory on tomorrow, which we checked out during last week's theme. I think it was actually two weeks ago uh, where we checked out something off their first album and their most recent. And we just happened to be checking out something from the middle of their discography in tomorrow's special selection. So that's really neat. I, I dig that. It's so close to that. Um, kind of get a nice comparison maybe see how they you know their trajectory 
Um, but yeah, we're doing that tomorrow. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.